Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these four super light and bright farmhouse decor pieces with Dollar Tree supplies. What I really love about all these projects is that they all go together really well, so you can display them all in a set, and they're really quick and easy. You can make them in an afternoon, so let's get started. First up is this color block vase. I've seen these all over the place and they're so easy to make with Dollar Tree vases. So grab a vase. I really liked this particular shape. And then I used the water trick to tape off a straight line. So just pour some water into your vase, then use that line to tape around. It helps you get it straight every time. And then I just took some Waverly chalk paint and did three coats around the bottom. So it was a matte finish. Then once it was done, I removed the tape and then I just added some styling elements. So these lamb's ear pieces are from Walmart. And then I also used my DIY beaded garland around the top to finish off that farmhouse look. This you could do with any color. I liked the white because then I could change up whatever color greenery that I wanted for any different type of season. But I really think this will be great throughout the fall and winter seasons for me to customize. Up next are these farmhouse books and this video I did about a year ago and it is one of the top ones on my channel so I wanted to share it again. This is so easy to do with Dollar Tree books. So you're gonna grab books that are all the same size if you're looking for that. The main thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure they're the same width. You can have different thicknesses if you wanna give it kind of a different character filled vibe. So then you're gonna go through and if there's a cover on them, like you saw, I removed that and then I painted the spines just white. Now, if the book is a darker color, then I usually go through and paint the entire book. I lucked out here that the whole outside was really a lighter color, so I'm just painting it this white so that the words are covered. I gave it three coats just so the chalk paint fit into the embossed pieces, so then you had a flat surface rather than that grooved effect that originally was on there with the name of the author being stamped in. Then I grabbed some of my letter stamps that I had from Michaels. I will link those down below. You can get these at the Target dollar spot. You can get letter stamps pretty much anywhere. You can also cut these out on your Cricut if you have that silhouette, whatever, and add them there. So there are a lot of different ways. And also you could even hand write them if you want it to look a little bit more like that. So if you are using the stamps, my best tip for that is to start all the way to the right and work your way backwards because then you're going to make sure that everything is right justified. Now, I like that it looks like a little bit of an old typewriter with the little pieces in between. If not, you can wipe off the outside of the ink so then you don't have that kind of run over, but I personally like that look. Also, don't do anything else while you're doing this because you could do what I did and accidentally forget the E in Sebastian. No worries, you can just paint over the top if you make an error. The paint, the chalk paint covers really well and then you're good to go. The final step is to assemble your stack. So I glued them all together. I added this strip of buffalo check ribbon I had hanging out at my house. Then I added some Dollar Tree jute cord to finish off the look. Now you can put whatever you want on here as far as sayings, you can do it seasonally, you can do some farmhouse, but I wanted a set because when I made my original ones, Finn was not a part of the family. So I wanted to make a set with four books to include all four of us, and it is now on display in our living room. Up next is a fun take on those Dollar Tree Crafter Square little crates. And instead of using it as a tray or a crate, I decided to use it as a stand up picture frame. So here's what it looks like unfinished from the Crafter Square section. I removed the sticker and then I gave it three coats of Waverly chalk paint. I did the three coats just because I wanted to make sure it was a stark white so that when I do the stamp in the next step, it was contrasted, but you could probably get away with two coats. Then I used this really cute stamp from a maker studio. I will link their information down below. They have a ton of cool craft supplies. So they sent me some to try out and I thought this would be really awesome to give it kind of a French country look 
to my decor. So I just took a little black ink pad that I had on hand. I got that, I think, for a dollar from the dollar spot at Target. I made sure it was completely onto the laurel wreath, and then I went ahead and stamped it. I love that it looks vintage and old, and I wanted to continue that look, so I took the edge of my stamp pad and kind of used it like you would to distress any type of chalk painted thing, but I ended up using the black instead. And then I peeled apart some pieces of greenery that I just had on hand from Walmart, but you could definitely use some Dollar Tree stuff. I added a Dollar Tree little clip, a photo I trimmed down of my two favorite boys to fit the space, and then I hot glued on all of the greenery. And then my final step was a little bow from some jute twine and I glued that on top of the clip to kind of finish off the look so it didn't look like there was, you know, any glue or anything there. I am a huge fan of these clothespin picture frames because they're so easy to switch in and out. This is one of my absolute favorite pictures of Alex and Finn, so I was so glad that I found a new way to display it in our house. And finally, this cute little sign that could be used for shelves, tiered trays, any type of vignettes, and I was able to put the lettering on it thanks to another item from a Maker Studio. So a Maker Studio has a ton of different options for stencils on their website, and so I did want to share this as an option if you don't have a Cricut. I know a lot of you tell me that, so this is an option where you can get a bunch of different stencils to use and be able to put some fun calligraphy and words on things without having to purchase a Cricut. So I went through and found some items that would fit on to this little sign and I grabbed this squiggly and then a couple different sayings. What you do is it's pretty simple, you just stick on the stencil and then I used some painter's tape just so I didn't get any of their little chalk stuff onto the sign. But the nice thing is the stuff washes off so easily. So that's a perk for a few different reasons. One, if you mess up, you can wash it off. Two, if you are ready to switch between seasons, you can use the same sign with different things on there. So like you saw that line, I just went ahead and wiped it off. And then I went through and did the same thing on the other side. So the chalk is pretty forgiving. It did take me a few times to figure it out and I'm definitely not a pro but the first couple times you do it you learn along the way and then you're able to kind of figure it out as you go but I like this as an alternative to be able to add wording to signs and then also it comes off way easier than vinyl if you want to use it for multiple different things throughout the year the two sentiments I went with were be generous and be humble So like I mentioned at the beginning, I absolutely love that these all work together. I love the light and bright feel of this. All of these can also be customized to your individual taste with sayings and colors and all of that fun stuff. Let me know down in the comments your favorite project from today's video and also be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!